Alrighty, and as people are coming in and filling out that poll that I went ahead and started, I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping. First things first, thank you so much for joining the Skin You're In, Getting Started with Human Physiology. We are thrilled to chat with you today. I'll pass it off to John Melville in just a moment, but I did want to cover a few items first. First of all, the recording of this webinar will be available on our website in the next few days. You will also be receiving an email with the recording link, as well as a folder with additional resources and a certificate of attendance. Um, we'd love to answer your questions in today's session, so please feel free to use the chat section in the Zoom window at the bottom of your window um, to ask questions. I'll be monitoring it. If we happen to not get to your question, we'll follow up with you afterwards. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have a survey going just so that we can make sure we're gearing this experience towards what you're looking for. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share that. And um, with that, I'll go ahead and pass you off to Director of Biology, John Melville. Thank you all so much. Hi, folks. Hopefully you can all hear me. Hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, let us know if there are any issues or problems. Um, as I said, in chat, and we'll answer them as quickly as we can. Um, it's great looking at the poll there. It looks like uh, most of you teach teach high school. We do have some college folks here, and most of you are all interested in the Vernier sensors. That's really a key information for me to know because I have some demonstrations of actually how the software works and actually how the sensors work, and we can go through all of that. Um, what I wanted to focus on today in this webinar, uh, well, first let's just talk about, oh, here we go. you're gonna meet me. I'm gonna introduce you to the GoDirect EKG. That's one of these key sensors. The reason why I'm focusing on the GoDirect EKG is because you can use it for several different experiments. But if you have any other questions about other human physiology sensors or how they work, feel free to ask. I have other sensors to show you that we use with the GoDirect EKG. And I'm going to make this hands-on, so I'm going to show you how easy it is um, to actually use the sensors here in the webinar. Um, and then we'll you know, do Q&A, and then we can ask questions later. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in biology and psychology from Sonoma State University. Um, I got my PhD in zoology from Oregon State University. And when I was at Oregon State University, I was one of the first people there to integrate data collection um, hardware into my teaching courses. There was a whole bunch of us there actually that were teaching animal physiology and human physiology. Um, and we, we literally were some of the first people at Oregon State that ever did that. Um, I then went and did a postdoctoral fellowship at University of Oregon in neuroscience. But the most important thing is that I'm a former educator. We like to say that uh, Vernier is for teachers by teachers. And so I just wanted to let you know that I've used all of this um, equipment in my class, older veneer equipment, mostly because I taught a while ago. Um, I was an associate professor of biology at uh, Wartburg College and where I uh, taught majors, uh, majors biology courses, non-majors biology courses, marine biology, uh, introductory to um, neuroscience, and then a whole, boast, a whole host of other courses. I always integrated human physiology into all of my courses. And my focus was on active learning with an emphasis on data collection and inquiry. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of my background. Once again, you can ask, the, ask all your questions actually in chat, not in Q&A. Um, someone will be answering as we go. And the first thing that I want you to do is if you don't have it yet, like you should find graphical analysis download it on your um, your device, uh, make sure it's the latest version, and then I have this GA Pro key here that you can use. And I just wanted to let you know that you don't need a sensor to use GA Pro, we're just gonna play around with it. Um, and I can show you how to get there. If we go here, we can go, if you go to downloads on our website, you can go to Vernier Graphical Analysis, And there's a download for Windows, Windows, Mac, Chrome OS, and you can also get this for iOS or Android. Um, so just go ahead and, and do that. And then I can show you how to actually um, put this key in there. 
when you launch graphical analysis, what you're going to see is this screen. It'll say sensor data collection, data sharing, manual entry. There's a little space right down here where you were to put where you should put that code in. By the way, this code is little little o. That's not a zero. So lowercase o, capital zero, capital O underscore w s y q two. Or you can just copy what's in chat and enter that in, and you should be good to go. And GA Pro will work for you until February. Um, so let's just wait. Let me know. Does everybody go ahead and try that or do that if you want to? Let me know if you have any questions. If you're not able to do it in chat, let me know. You know, put it put it there in chat, and we'll take care of it. Um, Just so you know, like you don't have to have GA Pro to use um, our sensors. Um, there's a free version that anybody can download and use. There's just some cool features that are in GA Pro that I want to show you. But if all that you wanted to do was just collect data from a sensor in graphical analysis, you don't have to buy the subscription or a site license or anything like that. All right, any questions before we move on? I think we're good to go. All right. So once again, we're gonna do. I'm gonna be doing a live demo, and I'm gonna be showing you some sensors. Um, I just want to show you what those some of those sensors are. I'm gonna be focusing on the GoDirect EKG. Oh, here. Hold on. Where did my camera go? Oh, that's Zoom. Sorry. Hold on. There we go. There we go. So here's IPO. This is a some software that I like to use called IPO Visualizer. I just want to show you that I really have some sensors here. I've got a GoDirect EKG. I've got a hand dynamometer, and this is a really nice little thing. This is a reflex hammer accessory that can be used with our GoDirect force and acceleration. And these two sensors can be used with the EKG sensor, but I'm just going to be showing you how to use the EKG sensor on its own first. All right. So let me back here uh the great thing about the GoDirect ekg sensor is you can study ekgs electrocardiograms ekgs ecgs you can study emgs which stands for electromyogram so you can look at the electrical activity of the heart you can look at the electrical activity of muscles you can also use it to look at heart rate and then we also have a really exciting activity that where it's used to actually look at reflexes I've done all of these labs in my class with our older probeware, and I've trained teachers on how to use them all with the new stuff. Um, and it's just really amazing how easy it, it all is to use. Uh, my students really love the reflex activity. I can't show that to you today, but I can show you how to do it or explain to you which lab book it's in. And you can do all of those things with just one sensor. Like you can look at EKGs, EMGs, heart rate, Reflexes are a little bit more difficult. You should use the reflex hammer and EMGs are a little bit better if you use our hand dynamometer. So that's what I'm gonna show you. So once again, go ahead and ask any questions if you wish. Almost all of, all of these activities that I'm gonna show you today are in our two books. So we have two books for our GoDirect sensors. One is Human Physiology Experiments. The other is Human Physiology Experiments Volume 2. Um, if you're just starting out and you just want to play around with the EKG sensor and uh, some what I would call like easier experiments, the core set of experiments that we suggest for everybody is in human physiology experiments that uses the EKG hand dynamometer, uh, respiration belt. It's, there's even a balance lab in it. It's a great lab book. And then if you want to do more advanced stuff, like you want to uh, use a spirometer or you want to use our blood pressure sensor, or maybe you even want to do more advanced analysis um, with our other sensors, EKG, et cetera. That's when we recommend the Human Physiology Experiments book, volume two. But I know lots of people that buy both. And if you buy both, they work with all of our probes. We have a package um, at, for of sensors that I can show you that works with both books. All right, so let's just get started really quickly. I want to show you how easy it is to collect some EKGs. 
And so hopefully what we're going to see is something like this. My heart rate isn't that clean anymore. Um, I'm not as in shape as I used to be, but we'll take a look. And I'm going to be showing you how to use the GoDirect EKG. And really, I just wanted to let you know that in this case, here's some of the things that we're going to be looking at. The GoDirect EKG can be used to compare and measure students' electrocardiograms or your own electrocardiograms, but also these other things. So we're going to, we're going to go through all of these little activities here. All right, so what is an EKG? Uh, what is an EKG for those of you that um, aren't familiar with one? The, the EKG or ECG is just the electrical activity of the heart. What we're going to be looking for is the P, QRS, and T waves. The P wave is the depolarization of the atria. The QRS complex is the depolarization of the ventricles. Sorry, let me back up there. And the T wave is the repolarization. So we have a great lab where students can look at an EKG trace, and then you can go back and take a look at actually how it works. All right, so here is our GoDirect EKG sensor. I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about it. It's a three lead EKG. So it has three leads. And there's a beautiful little picture here on how it should be used. Uh, green, I'll turn it there for you right there. Um, green goes on the right, red goes on the left, and black is reference. Now I've done a little bit, a little trick here that I would recommend if you're gonna be doing this experiment. And that's that I've already put my electrode tabs on. So the sensor itself comes with a pack of 100 electrode tabs. These are the electrode tabs. And I put them on myself. And you snap the little electrodes here onto the very end of the electrode tabs. Now, you don't have to use these electrode tabs. There's nothing that says you have to use these electrode tabs at all. Um, I know people that use snap-on electrode tabs. These are really nice. You would just snap it on here. And I actually really like 3M pads, which are also just really nice. They're just more expensive. Um, but if you know someone at a local hospital or if you know someone that works at a hospital, you can probably get them, get ones that have um, expired. And there's nothing wrong with them. They'll work great. I also wanted to let you know the following um, a lot of people talk about how our sensors are wireless. They're actually both. You can press on this button and it'll broadcast over USB or over Bluetooth, but there is also a USB port. The simplest way to use the sensor is over USB. So I just want to show you how to use it over USB first. It should be as simple as plugging in the cable. And hopefully we should be ready to go. I'm going to swap back over to our presentation here. And then, oh, let me go back here. Let me show you graphical analysis. There we go. So here's graphical analysis. Let me know if you can't see this. I'm going to just um, change this a little bit more to make this so it's in presentation mode. Just make it a little bit bigger for you all to see. And hopefully what you should see is I've connected it to USB. The software, like I didn't, I just launched the software and it's already recognized that the EKG sensor is attached. And um, for this base experiment, we've made it so that this is how it sets up. You, you really are just ready to record. All that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the electrode leads to myself. And I'm sorry that I'm not showing you that, but I'm just gonna attach them here. Um, our lab manual tells you to attach the electrode leads to the bicep um, and ground a little bit higher. It, it really doesn't matter as long as you're recording across the heart axis. It really will make a difference though for getting a better EKG, the closer you are to the heart. Um, the bigger the signal is going to be. This is just easy for me to do when I'm demoing, but you can uh, put it on your wrist. So let's collect some data. There's a nice trace. Let's do another data collection. 
Great. And now I'm going to disconnect myself so that I can move around. All right. So that's how easy it should be to record an EKG. You should be able to see a little P wave here, QRS, T complex. Um, I can move around here and find out where they are. I could find out the segment, like for how long that is by highlighting there. And then I can look down here and I can see the time interval. You know, if you wanted to calculate heart rate, it's number of beats per unit time. You can see that I, my heart rate is a little bit higher than 60 seconds because this is a three second trace and there ought to be just one per second. Um, if I wanted to record for longer, I could change this. You know, I could record for, um, instead of three seconds, I could record for 10. I could record for 20 seconds. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that you can also change data collection if you wanted to record EKGs. Uh, the software can also, it all, can also be exported. I can save it, export it, et cetera. Any questions on that? Has anybody ever done an EKG trace before? The one thing to be aware of is that I have like almost perfect, uh, e I don't want to say perfect EKGs, but my heart, I get very, very nice EKGs. You're probably going to see a lot more diversity with your students. And what we found is in some cases, you can ch change the lead configuration. There's a great lab that's in the advanced book that explains what lead configuration is. So you can change from lead one to lead two. It's just where you're placing the leads. Um, but if you do everything appropriately, you should get really good EKG traces. To show you a, a few other tricks, let's go back to the, the um, view here. The, some other tricks that you can do here is I have made sure that the EKG itself is away from the monitors. There's this thing called electrical noise, um, which can be a big problem. So I've made sure this is away from the monitor. Um, I've made sure that I've put on these electro tabs a few minutes early. The really nice thing is that if you wanted to do this wirelessly, you can move all the way from away from the computer and you'll probably get a much better signal. Oh, someone said I use the old model with my AMP course. Yeah, I used to use the old um, plug-in ones. All of the information that I'm giving you on the tips and tricks um, is is valid, right? So if as long as you limit noise, um, you're going to do great. Just let me minimize that again. Um, yeah, the, if you're interested in the old models at all, I'm an expert in how all of the EKG PTA stuff works. Um, I can give you all sorts of tricks on how to use it, how to make it work. Um, there's some really nice features that exist in GA Pro, and I can make your older sensors, your EKG PTA, work just as good as what I'm going to show you. Uh, so what I would recommend is if you want me to help you out with that, it's just using some calculated columns that exist in GA, if you're on Chromebooks or things like that, or Logger Pro please email me at biology at and, and I can show you how to do all of that. That's like one of my specialties, um, but I can get them all to work. If you have older equipment, the biggest thing, if you have older equipment, um, like, like our older sensors, the EKG BTA, the, the most important thing is to keep it away from uh, electrical devices, monitors, things like that. And also a big one is to, not plug in your laptop if you're collecting data on a laptop. If you have a LabQuest 2 and you're collecting data with that or a LabQuest 3, make sure you're using battery. I don't know how many times that's been the problem when someone has asked me, hey, my sensors aren't working right. I've got a lot of electrical noise. What can I do? And that's the answer is use battery power on your device. All right, other questions? All right, so let's go back here. Now there's this really cool feature that exists in GA Pro. And that feature is the ability to both data share and to show experiments in the video. So let me just show you this really quick. I think you'll like it. Let's just get graphical analysis back up here. Great, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect Oh, I'm going to disconnect by unplugging the USB cable. 
and I'm going to do file new experiment. Now I'm in GA Pro, so there's this really cool thing over here called C experiments. So if you look over here where it says C experiments. So I'm going to take a look at one of these experiments. We have all of these experiments that we developed for teaching remotely during COVID, but they all exist in here. And one of them is monitoring EKG. So let's just launch that. And what that is, is that is a video. This is my friend, Walter, who I play soccer with. And uh, we filmed him and we filmed his EKGs and we put it all into GA Pro so that if you have a student that can't make the, the lab, isn't there, they could go through and do this entire experiment and analyze Walter's EKGs. And he says it's okay to analyze his EKGs. Um, the way that this has worked is we could go to enable replay. And then now I can play back the experiment. This is Walter forgetting that he needs to place the red lead over on the other side. So I told him, you know, wrong lead, put that there and then red lead here. And then there will be a, a symbol pink that we're collecting data. And then there is the EKG trace that comes along. And then the students or whoever could analyze this data if they wanted to, instead of doing their own EKG. And this is a feature that only exists in um, GA Pro. All right, other questions, concerns, issues? All right, let's go do file new experiment again. Come back to this later. All right, so I've already done a live demo for you there. Oh, I is basically showing you the video. That's what I just showed you is there's the video with the data sync that you just saw. So that's this really cool feature. Um, so just to reiterate once again, there are these experiments that actually exist in Graphical Analysis Pro with video. Uh, you also can insert your own video. So you could insert your own video, do an experiment and use it for playback if you wanted to. So no questions? Everybody's pretty cool on how do you do an EKG trace? All right, one of my favorite things, and the reason why I love to go direct EKG, like I said, is because it can be used in multiple different ways. Lots of people think that it's only um, gonna be useful for looking at EKGs. You can also use it to study EMGs. Once again, your old sensors, same thing. If you get in touch with me at biology at um, I could show you how to do that. Oh, what, what did you have to do to insert the video? There's a whole process for like how you insert a video and sync. It, it would take me too long for this whole webinar to do that, but that's a great question. If, if you just email me at biology at veneer.com, I'll send you a link and I'll show you how you actually do that. But that's a whole involved process. Um, how long on average would you do a test for? Let's see, that's a question. A uh, test for what would be the, the question that I would ask there. Um, sorry, I'm re reading that in chat. Uh, seconds. Are, oh, most of the experiments that I do are going to be seconds. Um, like, but they could last, you know, maybe a minute, two minutes to do most experiments that we're going to be looking at. Um, heart rate is different, and that's a great question. Heart rate you want to last longer, so there's a way that you can make the go direct EKG record for longer, look better, and not have all that other stuff. That's a great question. Yes, we can totally do. Um, these experiments like EMG with our old version, like I said, all that you need to do is email me at biology at Bernier.com and I can show you. I, I can't show you. Well, let's just, let me show you how to do some EMGs. Let, let me show you how to do some EMGs and then I can show you a trick on how to do it with your other sensors. You really can. The trick is you're going to need GA Pro to do it, but I can still help you with it. All right. These are also just awesome questions. All right, so the GoDirect EKG has special channels for EMG and heart rate. And this is what I wanna show you. We wanna look at this right here. We wanna look at EMGs, and then there's a special thing that we can do where we can actually rectify them, meaning we can take all the negative things and make them go positive. I just wanna reiterate, I can make all of this happen with your old sensors. 
And oh, that's another important thing. Everything that I'm doing right now, this webinar for an hour, if, if you want a webinar with me personally, like a Zoom training, doesn't cost anything. As long as it's under an hour, just email me. We'll set up a meeting, get out all your stuff. I can make sure it all works and I can show you how to do this with your old probes too. I actually think that's a lot of fun, so please do. All right, so let's go back to our live demo here. Let's go back. I'm just gonna um, connect the GoDirect EKG sensor. And if you do it over USB, um, you may not notice this, but this is important. If you do it over USB, it's gonna default to the EKG channel settings. If you tap down here in the bottom right corner where it says sensor setup, you will see this thing called sensor channels. That's really important. If you tap on sensor channels, you'll see there's these other channels that are there, heart rate, EMG, and EMG rectified. And voltage, which is uh, something different, that's to get rid of all filtering. So I'm gonna turn on these two, EMG and EMG rectified. There is a way to do all of this, like I said, in, G in um, Logger Pro or graphical analysis now. You would need the pro version for your old probes. So I'm gonna turn, turn both of those on. All right, so we should probably talk a little bit about what an EMG is. So an EMG is the electrical activity of your muscles. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as the ground, and then I'm gonna record across my muscle, this is my forearm, Oh, I need to get to the gym. That's kind of a weak forearm. Um, so just like you measure across the chest, if you want to record from an EMG, you want to record across the muscle. So EKGs across the entire chest, EMGs across the muscle. So here we go. I'm going to put, and it doesn't matter which order at all. I'm going to put red here, green here, and then black here. All right. Um, one other thing here that's important is uh, we don't want to record. We don't want to record for as long, uh, or no, we don't want to record as fast. Let me um, make this go away here for a minute. Oh. oh, hold on. Oh, come on here, hold on, sorry about that. I'm just trying, there we go. So I'm gonna go down here in the bottom left corner and I'm gonna change the rate to 100. All of this is this would be the same for your older sensors. You would wanna change the rate. The issue is you don't wanna record super, super fast, um, but you wanna record for longer, say 10 seconds. And then I'm just gonna sit here quietly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the collect button. I'm not gonna um, squeeze anything for like two seconds. And then I'm gonna squeeze on, a, um, on something and you'll see a change in electrical activity of my forearm because that's what happens when you squeeze, the forearm contracts. All right, so let's try this out. And let me just show you a normal EMG first. Let's turn off the rectified channel. So I'm gonna hit the collect button, two seconds and then squeeze and then relax and then squeeze and then relax. All right. So this signal that you see right here, that's the electrical activity from the muscle itself. And the more electrical activity there is, the stronger the contraction typically. And there's a whole series of experiments that are in our book where you can look at fatigue, you can look at just basic EMGs, you can look at what happens when you start increasing, you know, the amount of force that you're using, all sorts of great experiments. Um, and you don't even have to use our experiments. My students loved comparing um, opposing muscle groups. You would need to use two EKG sensors for that, but that was always a great lab that they loved looking at. Now, the, the big question that a lot of people have is how do I analyze this, right? So there's 
a positive and a negative signal. And what a lot of people do is they just find the maximum. And that isn't really a great way to analyze this. Let's just zoom in. I'm gonna zoom into this data, right? So you could say, oh, well, we can find the maximum. There's a better way to analyze EMGs, but you need to rectify that signal. Rectifying just making just means taking anything that's negative and making it positive. And I turned that channel on. So there's a channel that exists on the GoDirect EKG and you can see it's made all of that positive. So now what I can do is, is instead of just finding the peak height, which you can see is actually kind of hard to do, find it in there. You can actually just grab the entire region, go to the bottom left corner and view the integral. And you could see that's, and just the integral, don't think of the integral, the word integral is a scary thing. It just means area under the curve. All that we're doing is adding up the area under that curve. And you can imagine that if that EMG trace is bigger, there's more activity, the area is gonna be larger. So it's a really um, simple way to explain how this would work to students. Um, and the GoDirect EKG sensor is super sensitive. We have a whole lab where you can look at squeezing with one finger to, not a lab, but we've done this before where you squeeze with one finger, squeeze with two fingers, squeeze really hard, squeeze really lightly. Um, so any questions on how to do that, on how to do an EMG? There are ways to do all of this in GA Pro with your old sensors. Let me just mention that really quickly because you asked. Um, there is a data table that exists. Um, and normally what you would have is if you were collecting with your old sensor, you would have a column here and that column would probably say EKG. Um, and what you need to do is figure out a way to make a created column for EMGs. I can help you do that. Um, you would want to make a calculated column. And it's, and then insert an expression, go to custom expression. And there's some very, very fancy um, features here. I can build this for you and send you a template file if you want. Um, I would wind up using a series of a, like a bandpass filter and then taking the absolute value and some other stuff. So if that's something that you want or you want to take a look at, the best thing to do is email me at biology at veneer.com and I can show you how to do it, and then I can build the template file for you and I can give it to you. The thing is, is we, we found out that it's a lot of steps to go through, so it just wound up being a lot easier um, if you use the GoDirect sensors. The GoDirect sensors are great because they work on everything, right? They work on Chromebooks, iOS, Mac, PC, Android, and they also work on LabQuests. So they work on everything. All right. We have one question in the chat. Uh, they're wondering if signal decreases with fatigue. Great. And then you said any iPad possibilities. Like I just said, um, this sensor already works. The GoDirect sensor works on iPads. Graphical analysis can be installed on iPads. So you can do everything that I'm doing with this sensor on an iPad. You can do everything that I'm doing with this sensor on a Chromebook. You can do everything that I'm doing with this sensor on a Mac or a PC or an Android tablet. So that's why we call it go direct because it goes direct to anything and everything. Um, all right, so should signal uh, decrease with noise? Um, that's a great question. And the answer is actually no, it will wind up increasing. And the reason why it winds up increasing is because the EMG is a, is a signal of what we call a neurological drive. So your brain is sending a signal out to your forearm as you're squeezing and it's firing off all the muscles. So you've got the motor neurons that are in your spinal cord that are firing off all the, the muscles. And as you begin to fatigue, your brain starts to drive it harder and harder and harder. You wind up getting lots more action potentials across the muscle because the motor neurons are firing more, but you still fatigue. It's like my favorite lab to do because it's a great way to show students Fatigue is peripheral. Fatigue is loss of calcium. Fatigue is loss of ATP. It, you know, eventually, like you can see the, the envelope of 
when you're doing fatigue, the envelope of the EMG just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the students are like, why is that happening? You know, force is going down and going down and going down. It's your brain is driving it harder to try to, to um, overcome that fatigue, but it can't. So that's one of my favorite labs to do to show that fatigue is peripheral. Great. All right. So if, if we have no more questions, I want to stop and just show you another really cool trick. I think it's a really cool trick with the GoDirect DKG. And once again, you can still do all of this with your old sensors. Um, you can do all of this with your old sensors, but you would actually need to use GA Pro. Let's see, let's see, Tom. Do you want to refer that question to me there, Dylan? As I, I move think, on? I think we got it, but I'll follow up. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do next, let's just go back here really quick. We did our live demo. Oh, we did our live demo. Let me, um, sorry, there we jumped ahead. There we go. All right. What I want to show you next is how the GoDirect EKG can be used to measure heart rate. Um, and that's something that a lot of people don't know. They're, they're not used to doing. But yeah, you can also use it to measure heart rate. The trick that you need to know is if you're going to be using it to measure heart rate, students can't move. You can't use it for exercise. It's really just for showing heart rate. Um, and that can be tricky because there's lots of wires, but we have a several activities that look at the diving reflex, or maybe you want to look at the effect of relaxation techniques or biofeedback. You really could use the GoDirect EKG to, to look at heart rate. You just can't use it for exercise or jump around. Um, it's, it's not that hard to do. It just requires using a special channel, just like we talked about. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go um, hook myself back up to the EKG trace left and right again. So you want to set it up like you're measuring EKGs. So let me do that here really quick. Let's put it on here really quick. There we go. And then let's go back. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, Start a new experiment. Go to sensor data collection. And for this case, remember, once again, all that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, channel settings. So we go over here to sensor setup, bottom right corner. And I'm going to go once again to sensor channels. And so I'm going to tap here and I'm going to turn these off. Now I'm going to go to heart rate. And now what's great is you should be able to see over here in the bottom right corner, it's measuring my heart rate already. It's giving a live output of my heart rate. And that's actually not pretty, that's actually not too horrible for me. It ought to be a lot lower, but I'm giving a presentation to a bunch of people I don't know. And, you know, hopefully this webinar is going good, but that's why my heart rate is pretty high. Oh, there we go. Now it's back down to 74, 75. Um, the the license for GA Pro, let's go take a look at that really quick. I'll come right back. The for GA Pro license. It's actually really affordable. Um, let me take a look here. These are all the differences between GA Pro getting started. Let's go to buy now. There we go. Um for a one-year site license for a large, like, you know, for a school, there's no limit on seats is $149. Um, if you want a three-year site license, it's like $300. So it's, a you know, it's cheaper. It's about $100 a year if you go to three. Um, I believe the one-year individual license, that's for like, if you have a really small school, you, you can't afford this and you have like one single class, we want to make sure that you're able to do that as an individual teacher. Um, and we can get you more uh, quotes on that. There's also quotes uh, for district pricing. So we have entire districts that buy GA Pro because it's got a lot of great features. Um, so you could have your district just buy it and then just have a district wide site license. So it's actually quite affordable. Um, 
you know, $300 a year for three years to let like as many students as you want use it for all the features that it has and everything else is, is a really good deal. Oh. All right, so let's go back and take a look at heart rate. Um, now remember it's set up for three seconds, so I'm gonna change that. Let's record for a little bit longer. I also don't have to record for 200 seconds. I could record a lot slower. I could record one sample a second and I could record for like, you know, 120 seconds. And then let me just hit collect and I'll try to be quiet. And let me see, I'll hold my breath and see if my heart rate goes up. At 20 seconds, I'll hold my breath. Oh, not so much. Oh, there a little bit. Um, great. So there you can see my heart rate went up a little bit, but you, you can see that it's a great way to just measure heart rate. And then my heart rate's going to go down after I breathe, and then it should return to baseline. Try to relax. So anyway, that's that. So, and there are also ways to use your old sensors to measure heart rate. Once again, it would require a calculated column. You would need GA Pro, just, just get in touch and I can show you how to do that or figure that out for you. Um, the free version not being stable and glitchly on, I think when you said CBs would mean Chromebooks. Um, it probably, It, it probably wouldn't be, uh, it's probably more an issue with your Chromebook, but you should definitely get in touch with us and we can talk about it. I haven't found them to be glitchy um, at all. I actually prefer graphical analysis now, even though I love Logger Pro, I'm an expert in Logger Pro just because it's very clean, works really well. And I have a Chromebook that I use every day. So it might be your Chromebook or how the Chromebook has been implemented, or it could even be like, just what you're using with it. Once again, just get in touch and we'll sort it out. Like I said, Veneer is for teachers by teachers and we wanna take care of you. Now let's see, someone asked, is there a way to average several people in a room with calming music? Um, you mean get the average? There isn't a way to record from multiple people simultaneously and get the average, but it would be very easy to get the average from a single event. There's a couple of ways to do that. I can just highlight the ent entire graph here. Let me just zoom in here. Like, let's say I wanted to just get the average of this trace. That's not hard at all. I go to graph options. And instead of applying a curve fit, I just view statistics. And you can see there's the mean, 71. So the mean for this entire run is 71. And uh, the way that we do several experiments in our lab book is we actually have students do that, where they would say, okay, here's the pre-test period, they would highlight the pre-test period, get the mean, highlight the test period by tapping and dragging, get the mean, and then tap the end period and get the mean. And all that you would need to do is just use the graph options tab. All right. Other questions? So that's why I love the GoDirect EKG is because you can use it for EKGs, you can use it for EMGs, and you can use it for heart rate. So there's like a whole series of experiments that you can do with just this one sensor that make it incredibly useful. Um, that LAS, oh, how much does it cost? I'll talk about that here in a minute. That's a great question. The last, oh, I'll, I'll talk about two other experiments too, but that last channel that I was showing you, um, there's this other channel called potential voltage that's usually used for seeing if there's something wrong for the sensor. We like to use it. It gets rid of all of the filtering, um, but it also can be really useful if you want to look at reflexes and we can talk about that as well. All right. So let me get done here. All right. Let's, let's see how much the GoDirect EKG sensor is. Oh, let me unplug myself from the electrodes. Thank you so much. Let's see if I search for GK, GDX EKG. Yep, 
it'll also be located under products and stuff like that, but that's one of the best ways to to find it there is just do that. There's the go direct EKG sensor. Let's see how much it costs. It's $169. Oh, hey, this is a great question. Great question. Um, great question is, um, I used to use Logger Pro. Our district got new computers and which didn't have it. Is Logger Pro still available or do you have to use graphical analysis? Okay, so that it's a that's kind of I don't want to say it's a trick question, but there's caveats to that question. Logger Pro is still available. I love Logger Pro. Logger Pro can only work on Mac and PCs. Logger Pro does not work with GoDirect sensors. So these sensors that I'm showing you, this sensor here is a GoDirect sensor. So it will not work in Logger Pro. There's no way to get it to work in Logger Pro. So if you want to use this sensor, you have to use graphical analysis. If you have older sensors, you can use Logger Pro, you can use graphical analysis. But if you want to use GoDirect sensors, you have to move away from Logger Pro. It's just, it's a, it's a very old software platform and we're not able to move it to Chromebook and everything else and get it to work. So that's the big issue. Oh, hey, um, I think you got that there, Dylan. You just need to give everyone permission to fill out that form for you and they should be good. It's, they'll just take a minute for her to cover that. All right, let's go back to the presentation. Yeah, she's, she's got it, Tom. She just has to change permissions. So we'll all be good. All right. Um, there was a few other things that I was going to show you maybe in the time we have left. But I figure since most of you want to know about probes and sensors, I should talk about those instead. There's a really cool way to data share in GA Pro. Um, data share means I can share stuff over the internet. So you could be doing an, an EKG sensor experiment and you could send a little link to your students and they could all get the data no matter where they are. That they could, they could, as long as they have internet access, they could literally be in Hawaii and you could be in New York and they would be able to get that data. Super great uh, feature, um, but let's talk more about other sensors that you may be interested in instead. So just wanted to let you know, data can be shared over the internet. There's a way to do that. Uh, we don't need to show you that with the time that we have left. But just to focus on this, GA Pro has really three different modes that it can be used in education. There's direct data collection, like in this graph here, student A. Um, there's data sharing. So maybe you have a student that's, you know, synchronous, but they're, they're you know, at home or somewhere else and they want to log in and do the lab or do the experiment, they can do that. And then there's the truly remote where you can insert video and they can see that experiment. So, you know, asynchronous learning. Okay. So in the time that I have left with you, let's talk about some of my other favorite sensors. My favorite sensor to use with the GoDirect EKG is our hand dynamometer. And this is our hand dynamometer here. Um, great sensor. You can use both of them simultaneously so that if you want to look at force with an EMG, it's great. So that's what we recommend for the fatigue lab. Works perfect. Um, a lot of people say to me, they're like, they're like, John, you know, it just feels like a one hit wonder. Like all you do is you just look at, you know, grip strength. Um, not true for the GoDirect one. I mean, the GoDirect sensor does have here. Let me just show you how this works here a little bit. Oh, let me go back there. Here's the GoDirect hand dynamometer. There is a way to grip it. So you can look at grip strength. You can also look at pinch. That's what these little things are here. But it also has an onboard accelerometer. So if you look down here really close, right by the on button. It's really small, so don't worry if you can't see it. There's a X, Y, and Z right there. And that's because there's a built-in accelerometer. The reason why we, we put an accelerometer in here is, is for engineering so they can do cool experiments. Um, but it's also so that you could do a really cool uh, balance lab. Um, like I said, I've I got a background in neuroscience and I love showing how balance works. You can turn the accelerometer on 
one of the channels of the accelerometer, put it in your pocket, and then just show students that you wobble around more if you're standing on one leg or two legs and how it's much harder to balance if your eyes are closed. So it's great if you want to use it on its own or for that. Um, so once again, you know, the GoDirect hand dynamometer is great. And you can also use it with the GoDirect EKG to correlate uh, measures of grip strength and electrical activity. And then uh, I'm not going to do a live video with you. The last thing that is super exciting, like my students love doing this, is a lab activity where we look at reflexes. And that, that is in our book. And that activity looks at reflexes. You use the GoDirect EKG to record um, EMGs from the thigh. And then you use a re reflex hammer. Now, the old way of doing this, you, you, you buy a reflex hammer and you tie the accelerometer onto it. What's great is we now have this. Is if you get a GoDirect force, Oh, and by the way, this will work with your old force sensor. You could have the DFS BTA, the old dual range force, and it will even fit on this accessory. So you need the sensor, and then you need the accessory. That's this piece. And then it's a reflex hammer. So it's just way easier to use. And that, that lab was one of the most popular labs that I used to teach, because what you look at when you're doing that reflex activity is how plastic the brain is. So if they do a little simple activity of just taking their hands and going like this, the reflex gets a much bigger. Um, and students always just love that activity. Once again, that's in our book. So once again, there's this reflex hammer accessory. You do need a force sensor to go with it. It needs to either be uh, the GoDirect force and acceleration, or it could be the older uh, uh, force sensor if you have the, the older EKG BTA or the older EKG sensor. Last but not least, because I want to make sure we have some time for questions, is um, all of this can be found in our uh, physiology starter package. So you can get all of the probes that I was talking about in our Go, uh, Go Direct physiology starter package. You can also buy them individually. You can also buy them singly if you want. Don't think that you have to buy the entire package. Get the ones that you need. And then last. All right, if you have any questions, put them in chat. Uh, don't forget that, you know, you can go to the website, you can call us. We have email, the biology team's email is biology at vernier.com. We also have chat. So if you go to chat and you see someone named Melville, Sarah, or um, Colleen, we're the biologist, you can ask us questions. And we love talking to teachers. So feel free to ask us questions. Oh, great. Yeah, no, the, the reflex hammer attachment is is a great one. Um, we thought about making our own reflex hammer, but it was great. David Veneer was like, but so many people have a dual range force sensor. So many high school teachers will know someone over in physics that has it. We decided to go with a much more affordable option, which is an attachment for it. Um, and it works. It's really, really quite simple. I can show you that here really quick. Oh, let's go back here again, computer. There's this nut here that comes with your force sensor. And you'll see that this is all that, it, all that it is. It's a handle and it's a piece of sheet metal that's been shaped with a little hole in it. You put your force sensor over there. You can see it's got the little hole right there. Oh, and it, it actually comes with the, with the, the little uh, reflex rubber part too as well. And then you just secure it. So it's, it's actually quite simple to set up and use. It's one of my one of my favorite extra things that we have now. The one thing that you need to be aware of is if you're looking at reflexes, reflexes are really, really fast. So what I recommend is if you're look, going to be doing the reflex lab, make sure you do it over USB. Uh, you're going to get much better timing resolution between the EKG trace and the reflex hammer. If what you're more interested in is how it changes, how the reflex changes, like does it get bigger, it gets smaller, go ahead and do it over Bluetooth. It'll work fine. But if what you really want is that like fine resolution of how quick it is, make sure you use it over USB. All right, that's all I've got, unless you have um, other questions. Oh, it is not USB-C. Um, we, we have a standard USB to USB mini cable 
you could use USB-C. You could buy a USB-C cable, and I actually think we have one of those that you could use, but they don't come with that. Um, any other questions? Thank you so much for coming. This is always fun talking to folks and, and other teachers. Oh, we're going to be at HAPS. I don't know if any of you have gone to the Human Anatomy and Physiology Society, but we go to that meeting every year. Um, and we also do a physiology workshop at NABT. That's the National Association of Biology Teachers meeting. We'll be doing another one there as well. So you can probably find us at either of those if you're interested. All right. If that's good, I think we'll probably give you back your five minutes of time and just end a little bit early. Um, but I'll also wait here too if you have any other questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we go. And once again, thank you for coming. This is really great to see you all. Um, let me know if you have questions. Remember, if you want help on how to get your uh, EKG sensors, your older ones, how to work this way, just email me at biology at .com. I'll set something up and we can do a training and I can make a, um, a file for you that should have it work as well. Thank you.